exclusive new reporting on a previously unreported episode in the Mar-a-Lago documents case. It comes as attorneys for the former president met today with Justice Department officials and signs increasingly indicate that special counsel Jack Smith's probe could be in its final stages. Seen as Caitlin Collins is here with more. So walk us through this exclusive reporting about Mar-a-Lago. Okay, it's a bit of a bizarre story, so bear with me, but okay. it was in last October, we are told that this maintenance worker at Mar-a-Lago drained the pool. And when they drained the pool, it caused a flood that flooded this room that we are told has the computer servers which store the surveillance footage on them. That's important because we know prosecutors have been looking at the surveillance footage from Mar-a-Lago. They've subpoenaed it several times. They've requested that they preserve records several times. What we don't know is whether or not this was an intentional flooding or if it was genuinely, genuinely a mistake. But the maintenance worker who was the one who drained the pool in mm. October, uh, which is a, the busy season at Mar-a-Lago also, I should note, is someone who has caught the eye of the prosecutors here. They've seized his phone. They've talked to him. He's someone who was seen on surveillance footage that they have moving boxes at mm. Mar-a-Lago. We don't know exactly which boxes, but he was moving boxes with another Trump aide. But when it comes to whether or not the role that he played here, they have a lot of questions about this because we are told that someone has testified to these prosecutors that nothing was damaged when this flood happened in this room where these servers were stored that kept the surveillance footage. But they view it as suspicious, and they've been asking witnesses about it and raising questions about it. And, of course, they're investigating whether or not there was any obstruction in their investigation. So I think it's just an odd instance that's right. raised a lot of questions. It will, uh, yeah, it certainly. Has all the video been given, handed over that was on the servers? Do we know? We're told that uh, we certainly know a lot of it has been given over, but they have been raising questions, what, what we're told. We, we learned so much of this of what investigators are asking people. They've interviewed basically everyone. I'm told, but they have asked about gaps in surveillance footage. We mm -hmm. know that they've had questions for the security guys who were running uh, and in charge of the surveillance footage. So there have been questions among that nature of what exactly was turned mm -hmm. over. Trump, Trump attorneys have said that everything has been turned over. This was technically up to the Trump organization that got these subpoenas. Uh, but I still think it raises a lot of questions, just given, of course, what we've seen play out here. What do we know about the meeting between Trump lawyers and the Justice Department today? Yeah, so that was today. You saw Trump attorneys going into the Justice Department. I I'm told Jack Smith, the special counsel who was investigating the classified documents and January 6th, was in that meeting. Hmm. They requested a meeting from the Trump side with Attorney General Merrick Garland. They wrote him a letter. They alleged that there was some pro prosecutorial misconduct here. They didn't really say what. It was pretty broad strokes. We know, obviously, though, typically before someone is indicted, their attorneys would like to meet with them. That's not what we're told was the, the content of this meeting today. I think it was raising questions about the special counsel's investigation. They've certainly had some, some broad complaints, nothing really specific about how this has been handled, but they were inside the Justice Department for about 90 minutes yeah. today. I think what's most telling is what Trump was saying after, because he was posting, why should he be charged when no other presidents have been charged? We don't know that they, they told him he was going to be charged or anything, but he was posting certainly that. referencing. Uh, I know you're, you're going to be anchoring at 9. You've got the former U.N. Ambassador John Bolton on the program, worked also obviously on the Trump administration. We'll watch for that right now to get a better sense of what goes on in these meetings that attorneys have with prosecutors, as well as what goes into the ultimate decision on indictments. We're joined by CNN senior law enforcement analyst and former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe. So what likely happens in a meeting like this between Trump's attorneys and DOJ officials? <laughs> Sure. So, Anderson, it's it's good to also know that uh, avoiding getting your client indicted is every defense attorney's first and biggest goal. And so the last ditch effort to try to avoid an indictment is usually a meeting along these lines. The defense attorney's request to come in and basically explain to DOJ why an indictment would be a, a bad idea. Uh, it's a bit of a Hail Mary pass, like you would see at the end of a football game. One last ditch effort to avoid disaster. What happens is the attorneys come in and they say, you know, they'll make an argument that, you know, the case is weak, that it shouldn't go forward. They have compelling evidence of innocence. Uh, and then they'll usually argue some level of it would be unfair to go forward against uh, against their client if justice was, were to do so. You typically don't hear anything said on the other side of the table. DOJ will usually listen to the presentation give the attorneys all the time they've all the time they've requested and at the end of the presentation say thank you very much for coming we'll give you a call if we have anything to tell you uh, 
Um, it's a it's a long shot strategy. It's worth the effort if you're a defense attorney, but it's certainly not worth pinning your hopes on. So when we hear that the, the former president's attorneys are claiming prosecutorial misconduct, it, it may not be that they have some smoking gun, they have some heretofore unheard of uh, evidence. This may just be a last-ditch effort to do whatever they can. Yeah, I think it's highly unlikely that they have significant evidence of misconduct simply because so many elements of this investigation have been ferociously litigated between the two sides. So you've had a lot of judicial uh, intervention and oversight already in this investigation. We had, of course, a search warrant that that uh, that took place. The justice went back in front of uh, uh, the judge and requested sanctions against the Trump attorneys. They've gone in and and pursued an effort to pierce the attorney-client privilege to get evidence from Trump's attorney, Evan Corcoran. So there's been a lot of judicial in intervention. It would seem that if there was actual misconduct, that would have come out. But my suspicion here, Anderson, is that Trump's attorneys know the only way to get an attorney general to really weigh in and remove or stop a special counsel has to be on a finding of misconduct. Under the special counsel regulations, that's really the only way you can turn off, an attorney general can turn off the special counsel effort. So if they claim that the special counsel engaged in misconduct, they can essentially fire him, but they have to report that to Congress. So that is a big ask. That's literally swinging for the fences. And, and based on your experience and what you, what you see publicly, do you believe Jack Smith is near the end of his investigation? I do. I do. I think it could come very quickly. These meetings with defense attorneys trying to basically plead their case before it's indicted usually come at the very, very end, right before the prosecutor goes before the grand jury and asks them to indict the case. Uh, so I think we could see that happen really any time now and certainly within the next few weeks. We've also seen all the major witnesses that we're aware of, most of them anyway, we know have already been in front of the grand jury. We, we already understand there's a, there's a lot of evidence they have to work with here. Just from the things that have been publicly reported, they likely have much more than that. So I think it's reasonable to expect that this thing is in its, in its final stages and the investigative side. Well, what do you make of Caitlin Collins reporting about the Mar-a-Lago pool flood raising suspicions among prosecutors? <sighs> Yeah, that's a really weird one. I mean, it certainly indicates, gives you an indication of the high degree of suspicion that, uh, you know, each side has of the other. Certainly DOJ is investigating obstruction here. We know that from the search warrant application. So they're going to look at every possible act as a possible, you know, every every act is a possible element of obstruction. Mm. In this case, with with the witnesses already saying that the flood didn't really damage the computers, it's hard to say until we hear that the Trump team is actually claiming that they cannot produce the videos requested under the search under the uh, subpoenas because the the material was damaged right. by water. It's hard to say that they're actually using that as some sort of a what, what, what does effort. obstruction so, look like? I mean, from a legal standpoint. So obstruction, you know, in order to charge someone with obstruction, you have to be able to prove that they intended to obstruct an official proceeding, right? So an accident, the accidental flooding of a room with computers in it, um, without more evidence of actual intent to stop or obstruct the proceeding, in this case, the investigation, wouldn't pr probably rise to the level of a chargeable offense. Right. Um, however, conversations with your lawyer in which you're lying to your lawyer about where the docs are and what's available to be searched, as is also allegedly taking place in this case, that could very well be uh, uh, end up as a chargeable offense. All right. Andrew McCabe, appreciate it. Thank you.